Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So you guys would have seen on a stream that I've been leveling this up over the last, well, I've been leveling this up since last week, but I wasn't quite happy with the build until now, as you would have seen in the B-roll, it can do 600 depth in delve. And to give you an idea of how good this character is, let's pull it up on screen on POE Ninja to show you where I'm currently placed on the ladder with it. So I thought this was actually really cool. So I managed to somehow make the lowest depth delving poisonous concoction character in the league in like the span of a week and i am so much more tanky than any of these guys my damage may not be as high but uh it still puts out and that being said more investment would beget more damage at the end of the day but it's around you know on the average mark give or take but uh yeah currently filtered for the lowest depth in the league uh, this is my character for Poisonous Concoction. Now, even with Divergent, still kicks ass. These guys are doing a little more damage. But, uh, yeah, basically, we're on the top of the Delve Ladder right now for Depth 601 Reach with Poisonous Concoction. So, let's talk about how I made my character. Um, and I'll send a link in the description to this character sheet as well, just so you can have a look. Anyway, so basically, what is Poisonous Concoction? Well, it's Poisonous Concoction... We throw flasks. Now, how does this work? What's the synergies? What's the idea behind it? Basically, we use life flasks. So it by default, as you can see, uses up life charges on the life flask. And then over time, because of the ascendancy and a number of various other nodes on the tree, uh, we regenerate those flask, uh, those flask charges natively and also have auto trigger flasks and whatever set up here. Now, damage wise, the stats for the damage on this looks low. It's like 1.2 million, and that's like juiced up with Val Haste and everything else up and running. We're infecting with uh, our Plague Bearer. But it sort of stacks up and does a shitload of damage. Like, it's really weird. I, I can't fully explain how poison works. I'm not really an expert in poison, but it works anyway. Um, and the other thing that we do in this build, different to other ones, is we actually use Snake Bite. To stack up frenzy charges and we get to about eight frenzy charges on this build and then basically you know we do poison per five percent more damage over time per frenzy charge so yeah that's what eight times five which you know is a pretty good stat so yeah that's a plus so on top of this we also use the magnate which i need to get a better magnate um, on this build so this build is nowhere near completed um we used uh oh, parapetia uh, shield, it's just the best in, in socket shield. Now, I have a pretty crappy um, anoint, or sorry, crappy craft on it, crucible craft on it. I was trying to get others, but it's actually really hard to sort of level up. I'm just going to dump this out because I don't need these anyway. Um, I was delving with it. Um, now, I'll talk through all the itemization, but basically the idea behind Poisonous Concoction is we don't need a weapon at all um, because we throw flasks. So, that's basically all there is to it. As long as you've got a big chunky health flask with a lot of charges, you should be fine as well. So there's no particular craft that you need aside from like quality if you can get it on the flask to get as many flask charges as possible. Um, and you could use a divine flask or whatever, whatever you can find that, that does the job. Now, other things to bear in mind, uh, you will need an All's Uprising. I managed to make this work with so many auras. I've got like six auras on this because I can basically use Grace as well as Determination. And this actually multi-stacks two different types of defensive layers as well. So it has, you know, a high cap of like, you know, 30, oh, nearly 30,000 armor. And then it gets up to like 50 or 60,000 evasions, something like that. So we get to like 90% physical damage reduction and we get to like, you know, 83 to 86% evasion, which is still currently leveling up because I've got arrogance that's still leveling up against my Grace Aura. Um, and then, yeah, basically the other defensive stats here is we have a shitload of life regeneration. So we cycle between anywhere up to 800, 500 to 800. And the way that this occurs is I actually, because I stack so much in either evasion and armor, I actually took the every four seconds regenerate life equal to 1% of armor and evasion rating over one second. And then I also took surging vitality because I thought it'd be funny and I wanted to get my life pool up. So every four seconds, I also get 10% of life regenerated over one second, which is really cool. Now, the other stat that we actually use to push defenses up, so we have purity of elements in this build too, just for good measure. 
Um, I also have block um, or max block, but an unconventional version of max block. You'll notice that I don't have Rumi's concoction in here. And it's because I actually found a way to use second skin, push my armor up and then use versatile combatant, which gives you uh, 2% per 1% of additional block over 50%, but caps both your, both your spell and your attack block at 50%. So how do I get around the other spell damage that I take? Well, the logical thing is to get anywhere up to 44% spell suppression chance. So it cycles between 28 to 44% spell suppression. And this is coming from my quartz flask. So we get a lot of spell suppression. Now, I don't have any corrupted blood in the tree because my flask go off constantly. I have immunity to corrupted blood constantly from my quartz flask. And I also cap out my elemental resistances by having quicksilver flask because my flasks regenerate and trigger automatically because I have used when charges reach full and they're constantly reaching full then I have pretty much constant uptime on additional elemental resistances, though be it, it just caps it over the limit, basically. The other thing, we have like 54% chaos resistance because I have a lot of chaos resistance in this build. Um, and then if you're wondering about despair, I do have despair curse aura running uh, while running a witchfire brew, and this saves an absolute ton of money in trying to get your rings to work because you could get despair on hit, but it's super expensive, so it's much, much cheaper to run it as a flask that automatically triggers constantly. So it's pretty much up, you know, all the time. So it'll trigger again in a few seconds and you'll see the aura come up here. Um, outside, as you can see, the other thing to sustain mana, we don't need to worry about that because we're running a devouring diadem. So we basically just convert all energy shield to our pool, uh, our mana pool, and then we can fully reserve all of our mana for a shitload of auras that we run in here, including Herald of Agony, Grace, and everything else. Um, and then basically we boost Grace up even more by having Arrogance because it's set up under a um, All's Uprising Grace setup. That means that it has no mana reservation costs, so we can run Arrogance freely and that increases the effect of the aura. Now, if you wanted more armor, you could switch Grace out for Determination if you could afford the All's Uprising. And you could super juice determination up to basically push it up further. Now, the other thing that's also in the build, I don't have any type of special chest. I literally just have an armor and evasion based chest. Now, if you can get it over a thousand or up to 1500, that's ideal. It's like two div. And basically you can attack every other stat you need, including getting max block uh, attack damage up, um, which is an additional 10% spell block and then 20% increased chaos damage or whatever other stat you want to get on it is entirely up to you. Um, and then boots, you know, we also use this to prop, uh, to prop up our poisons and whatever, but you can get better rolls on this. Uh, in the POV, I have the helm enchant, but I don't have it on the actual build itself. And some other things to know about poisonous concoction is, is it's actually triggered by attack speed, not cast speed. So these are some of the things that I found out. Uh, and so Ancestral Protector actually makes you cast quicker, which is really cool. And the faster that you cast, the more poison that you hit with, the more damage you do. And also on top of that, we run Focus uh, on the roll on the Devouring Diadem because when we're focused, 81% increased duration of ailments um, is inflicted on your enemies. Now, moral of the story, this build's gotten down to about 600 depth and delve. As you can see in the bureau, it can do everything in the end game. It can do 20% to 40% delirious super juiced maps as well. It's like an all rounder slash delver. Like if you hit 400, it just creams through delve. It'll rip through delve bosses like Crystal King and all that sort of jazz. Super tanky, um, super sustainable and really, really cheap. So the investment for this build that I've sort of put in, the side 2 div for this, maybe 2, 3 div for this. How much are these right now? 3 div, 3 to 4 div, like 5 div, uh, helm 1 div, literally 2 to 5 chaos. Uh, you could craft these, so probably like 10 chaos tops. Um, snake bites with that, 50 chaos. The rings are basically worthless. Um, this ring here is 25, 30 chaos and belt is what, 10 chaos. And then when we have a look at the gear setups, like we're not running anything crazy. Spike concoction and brute potency is like 150 chaos. Um, unwavering e evil and brood potency. I actually just crafted this myself. Second skin I crafted myself. 
I only have uh, Unspeakable Gifts and Wicked Paul on my large cluster. And by the way, it does uh, Chaos Pop with Unspeakable Gifts. So we have Chaos Pop. So if you have more currency, you can get a third roll in here and get more damage into the build easily. Uh, the Watcher's Eye is pretty cheap as well. It's literally just blinding enemies. Which is was like 50, 60 Chaos or whatever. So we actually have more damage than what I initially thought. Because while we have Grace, we also blind enemies. Um, so that also reduces inbound damage as well. And then outside of this, I have a Thread of Hope in here as well. It's a very large, which again, 20 Chaos. Um, and then really, like, there's a Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame set up, which uh, one div each, which has Allocates Way of the Poacher, which gives me the ability to generate more Frenzy Charges much more efficiently, which is really good on this build. And I don't know why nobody fucking uses it, because it, they were like one div each for each of the Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame Jewels. And it's literally one of the best things that you could get in the build. And it means you don't have to find another solution to get around generating Frenzy Charges. So to have a look at the stat here, um, Way of the Poacher, which is on the tree here. Where are you? Allocate. So 20% chance to gain Frenzy Charge on Killer when you hit a rare or unique enemy. And 1 plus to maximum Frenzy Charges, which this stacks Frenzy Charges to do poison damage. And also gives you huge amounts of speed and armor increases. Sorry, evasion increases, which increases survivability when using Discipline of Slaughter, Attack Speed, Movement Speed, and Evasion per Frenzy Charge. So basically... This has like the holy trinity of defenses and offense and for a character that's probably worth less than 15 div tops, 10 to 15 div if you're lucky, um, you know, and you can pump way more currency into it. This is a really, really, really good build. Now, I have this at level 97 currently, um, and that's pretty achievable for most players if they're playing consistently. And like you could level it up doing five ways or whatever, up to you, however you do it. And that might be two or three div if you want to count that as part of the cost. Um, basically, yeah, just a really, really solid ass build. Now, could you play this from league start? Yeah, you could totally play this from league start. Like the gear on this isn't so ridiculous that if you league started this, oh, it would be impossible. But no, nah, it'd be like super achievable at league start. And I might even consider playing it at league start because seriously leveling this build was one of the easiest things I've ever done. League on League, it just ripped through enemies. And then when I got it to endgame, it just ripped through endgame. Anyway, let's get into the uh, into the gearing and talk... Or into the POB, sorry, before we get to gearing. And let's talk about what makes this build tick and where everything comes from. So we can do a bit of a bullshit check as well on the tree to make sure that I'm telling you everything you need to know. Okay, as per the normal, we'll go through the configuration page. So we can do a bit of a bullshit check over this to make sure that you guys are satisfied with the way that this build works. As you can see, the build does work because I'm the lowest depth uh, Pathfinder for Poisonous Concoction right now, which is really cool. Is this better than Exploding Totems? No, it doesn't do as much damage, but it's definitely really sustainable all around. It pretty much meets, meets the bill of any build that I would generally put up, so that's why I'm saying this is pretty good. Now, apparently this was nerfed. Um, if it has been nerfed, well, you know, it's still pretty damn good. So I'm just going to go with that anyway. So, all right, let's talk through this. So bandit quest, kill, or kill everything, kill them all. Take the two points. You're better off doing that. Now, major god on the pantheon, soul Lanaris and soul of Aberith. This deals with burning damage on the ground. And because we're in Delve, we're surrounded by approximately 10 enemies plus is what I always calculate. So I have that in there. Now you do from time to time generate power and endurance charges you do get endurance charges when you block um which comes off this node down here so yeah we can leave this ticked on because i'm going to be blocking a fair bit in delve now i have eight frenzy charges as you can see frenzy charges is where a lot of the damage of this particular build comes from so you do need the snake pit which is like a 1c item or you know like a little bit of extra c if you want the plus one to frenzy charge not absolutely necessary but it's nice to have um, am I focused? Yes, I want to be focused. So when you hit focus, you do more damage when you run away. The, the poison lasts longer, so pit things die quicker. Um, I don't have Onslaught on the build, but if you can get it on the build, then you'll do even more damage. I'd recommend trying to get it on your boots. Uh, Alchemist Genius comes from this node here. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Alchemist Genius. So Spike Concoction, I'm not fully across what it does, but it does something, so we want it anyway. So 
Uh, I could probably do better with that. Oh, sorry. 20% increased flask charges gained and 20% increased effect of flask charges. There we go. That's what it does for us. Am I elusive? Yes, I am elusive. I'm elusive because I run Withering Step. And this allows for elusiveness, a grants elusive when you cast it. And I just have that set up on my move button. Uh, flask charges are active. Yes, I'm constantly using flask, but it doesn't do anything to the build. If I had consecrated ground, I'd probably do more damage, but it's not really saying let's get more life regeneration um and then basically i don't have any other stats here are uh, you need enemies yes 10 and this is linked to the soul lunaris have i been hit recently well if i'm in delve usually i'll be hit recently so yes um now stages i will have uh vir virulence but you know it doesn't do anything to the build so why would i put it in here so infecting and incubating there is a damage difference between the state of plague bearer because you do need to run plague bearer on this build so if you're infecting and almost instantly you will generate maximum charges for plague bearer then you basically put it like an rf poison aura and you can increase your poison damage over time as well so yes i have that infecting but you can set that incubating you can do whatever you want that will be active on bosses as well as your frenzy charges so all this will be up now, is the enemy boss a guardian or pinnacle boss? Yes, if I wanted to cheese it, then I could go no, but yeah, they're guardian. And is this going to do uber? If you can survive long enough, then my answer would be yes, but this isn't an uber build. It's not made for ubers, it's made for delving and it's made for mapping. So, and it's made for like your standard end game. It's, it's like an all-rounder, it's not made for ubering. But if you're good at the game, yeah, you could play ubers with it, no sweat. Um, with a little bit more investment, you could probably play, Uber, play Ubers really easily. Um, anyway, beyond that, so is the enemy poison? Yes. Uh, do we have Wither stacks? Yes, we do Wither because it basically comes natively with the skill. Um, so 20% chance to inflict Withered for two seconds on hit. And we hit so much that you'll have Withered. Then we also have Withering Step as well. So there's plenty of opportunities for Withered to kip, kick in. And you'll see that as the damage rises and murders enemies and we also buff up withered on the tree with this note up here wasting uh sorry not wasting uh, where are you there was a withering node here somewhere oh, i hate it when you do something but you can't remember what it is anyway there was something to do it wither up ah corruption duh i'm an idiot uh, 20% increased effect of Withered. So we have Corruption as our Anoint on our Amulet. So that increases the amount of damage that we do with Withered as well. So yeah, that basically is a legit stat there too. Uh, is the enemy blinded? Yes, the enemy is blinded because we have that on the Watcher's Eye. I don't know why I keep hitting the wrong button there. Um, we have it on the Watcher's Eye on the build, which is down here. So when we, we have 44% chance to blind enemies, which uh, are hit which hit you while affected by grace. So if we get hit while we're affected by grace, the armor and the block will sustain that. And then the enemy will become, you know, almost a one out of two chance of being blinded, which increases our defensiveness and our ability to damage the enemy. That's basically it for the tree. There's nothing else ticked on for the tree. Like if you wanted to add some other type of flask, you could. This is a cheaper way to get around the build. Like with more investment, you can definitely make it stronger. But I'd say 87% evade chance and 90% physical damage reduction with half-half block. Spell suppression that goes up to 40% uh, and whatnot is pretty good defensively at 133, nearly 134,000 effective hit pool on a Pathfinder. That's pretty damn consistent. Anyway, let's talk about the gearing and what makes this work. Okay, so let's talk about gearing. Uh, so first thing, Devouring Diadem, and if you can get the Anoint for Poisonous Concoction, uh, increased damage, uh, sorry, the Enchant, not Anoint, then absolutely. Um, Amulet, I'm running an All's Uprising with Grace, Retino Reservation. This allows me to have free Grace R, and it means I don't have to balance a heap of um, R Reservation in my tree or anything like that. Or have an Ashes, which, you know, Ashes might increase my damage, but it's also uh, much less sustainable to get because it's like 20 or 30 div, which is the price of almost this entire build plus a little bit more. Um, then we run the Parapetia, um, and basically this is a weird one with the Implicit. Try and get Evasion Rating or Armor. Uh, actually, no, Evasion Rating because it's a local mod. 
And so w there are differences between global and local mods. With some of these items like synthesized shields like this, it's a local mod, which means it's relegated to the shield itself and not relegated to everything in the character. And because this shield doesn't have armor, if you get an armor roll on it, it won't mean anything. The advantage of this item is 19% attack speed, 14% movement speed, a heap of energy shield, which buffs up your ability to cast and gives you a, a bigger pull, and also a heap of evasion, which makes this, you know, tankier. And I also lucked out because I got increased evasion rating on the actual node on the actual uh, item itself. So that was a big plus. Um, outside of this, the chest literally just, uh, you know, a... a, a Brigand, brigandine, brigandine, brigandine. I can't pronounce it very well. My English needs to be, get better. Um, armor and evasion base is where you want to go with this because you stack both armor and evasion. So this just makes you way, way more survivable. Now, if you did switch this and just have armor, right, to give you an idea, it does drop your defensiveness, but it does also mean that you have a hell of a lot more armor. So if we wanted to do this, for example, you could. And you would straight away go somewhere up to like a hundred thousand armor. So should you choose to need the armor for whatever reason you might need it for, um, then yeah, that is also an option. But I wouldn't recommend you get more survivability out of a hybrid methodology. All right, so rings. I literally just have a ring to tackle everything that I don't have on the build. And if you get evasion rating, even better because we stack that. So basically fire cold and lightning resist and life and then any other th resistances you can get, which I can roll that up more with fire resistance. So it's sort of underbaked. Um, and then I have a circle of nostalgia. Basically, I've got also a roll here for 6% increased evasion rating per frenzy charge because we stack frenzy charges. This is a huge advantage, but you basically want 40% increased chaos damage at a minimum while you're affected by Herald of Agony and then, you know, chaos resistance while affected by Herald of Agony. And this is how we get a huge amount of chaos resistance on this build, which makes it really, really sustainable. Then the obvious one, Magnate. The reason why we want the Magnate more so than having the damage mods because we only have 165 armor, we get all resistance, which is really good. And we also get 50% increased flask charges gained, which is huge for this build because it's predicated on flask charges. So that's how we get around that. That's why we can sustain our flask constantly when we're in maps of being hit or whatnot. Now, gloves, we want Snake Pit, which is a dirt cheap item, uh, literally 50 to 100 chaos. And the reason why is it has a corrupted implicit for one plus maximum frenzy charges, which is really good on this item. The advantage here is we get 2% increased attack speed per frenzy charge, times that by 8 is 16% attack speed. Evasion rating, and we also get 5% to damage over time, multiply for poisons per frenzy charge, which is times by eight as well so it's pretty good um and then the boots i've got are literally just any goliath greaves we want cows resistance movement life and any regeneration we can get on it and also i balanced out my strength and intelligence on my boots as well and try and get the implicit roll for poisons you inflict and uh, deal more damage faster and that's basically it for itemization and then all my um all my flasks so i've got a quicksilver flask with additional elemental resistance Witch Fire Brew, really important because we don't have Despair on the ring. You will need a Witch Fire Brew to do huge amounts of damage with the level 21 Despair Aura. Um, I have a Granite Flask with increased armor and charges when you get hit as well. And I also have a Quartz Flask. This increases my spell suppression, gives me phasing. And I've got Corrupted Blood on this, so I pretty much always have Corrupted Blood up. And then just a huge ass Eternal Flask because we need this. And you only need one Flask. You could have more than one Flask, but you only need one Life Flask to make this skill work. Um, and then basically, yeah, that will just basically use that up as you cast and then Bob's your uncle, you're good. Um, that's basically it for gearing. Okay, so for gem setups, in the helm, because this is basically giving me plus one to socket of gems, if you can get plus two, even better. Um, I've got Herald of Agony, Determination, Enlighten at level three, which is pretty cheap now, and Purity of Elements, so that's pretty much all you need in the helm. Uh, in the uh, shield, I've got Molten Shell on a Castle Damage Taken setup, and you can choose what level you want to do it at. I've got 12 Castle Damage Taken and 16 Molten Shell, which works fine. I hope. Yeah, it does. Bam. Uh, and then I've also got level 20 Defiance Banner in the shield as well, because we're stacking both Evasion and Armor. This really synergizes with that. In the chest, I've got Divergent Poisonous Concoction, and I'm pretty sure I have this because it does Increased Wither. Um, 
think or poison or poison on hit can't remember anyway get diversion it's better um <laughs> and then awaken void manipulation uh greater volley and i've got 2120 on that which was pretty cheap awaken vicious projectiles again really cheap um awaken unbound ailments and greater multiple projectiles and ideally i think if you get anomalous it'll increase your damage more so than getting a awakened greater multiple projectiles also awaken greater multiple projectiles just isn't worth it cost wise it's way too expensive so this is a pretty much a, a good enough option for what you need it for um in the gloves i'm running arrogance uh and grace now because grace doesn't require any reservation under the all's uprising you can tack on arrogance as long as you've got no other aura skills in here then it'll buff up the effect of grace which will give you a huge amount of um es uh, into your uh sorry evasion rating um and then i've got withering step which is just set up for when i move and then i've also got plague bearer which i drop once i generate my um my charges on my plague bearer and then when i'm in map I'll drop it and it's like having righteous fire um and then in my boots i've got ha uh, val haste so i have that triggered you know when i'm running around i pop val haste and you'll generate that really quickly and then flame dash ancestral protector and vitality on this build because i like having a lot of health regeneration as a base and it keeps cycling up and down um and now you will use ancestral protector now i don't have phantasmal if you can get phantasmal even better because that's going to buff you up even more but that's basically it for skill setups Okay, so for the fun part now, skill tree. All right, so let's start from the start here. So obviously this is a pathfinder, so no brainer. We're going to start from the ranger area. So we come down, pick up these uh, dexterity nodes. We move up and get finesse, and we move up, get ballistics. Now I moved up to get charisma first, and you want to get 8% increased damage for each aura uh, or herald skill that's affecting you, because this is like 130, 150,000 um, poison dot. And then we come up, we grab these dex nodes, put our first Forbidden Flesh, um, Forbidden Flame Jewel in, and then we grab Wasting, we come up, get Blood Siphon, we get Fangs of the Viper, through to Blood Drinker, we get our first uh, Frenetic Node for Frenzy, and then our second uh, Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Flesh Jewel, which will give us Way of the Poacher. Now, I did this early on as I was leveling, and it was just ridiculous, so I would recommend going that path start. And then basically, we come back down, we grab Intuition, it starts to build our, build our spell suppression innovation on life then we get herbalism we come down we get swift venoms and we get poison mastery poisons you inflict um <laughs> deal damage 20 percent faster then we come up and we get acuity and we get dexterity's accuracy bonus instead grants three to accuracy rating per dexterity now one thing that nobody tells you with these builds because it uses attack speed, the flask throw actually requires you to have accuracy in the build, and this fixes all of that. So basically, this caps your accuracy, which you'll see has 95%, which is pretty good. So yeah, accuracy is a thing. You will need it on this build, just an FYI. Then we grab Fervor, and we also put our Thread of Hope in, of which we'll link in... Uh, revenge of the hunted if you can get it hunter's gambit and thief's craft and this will give us intelligence to get us over the cap we need and if you can get to the point poisonous fangs gives you another 10 damage over time but realistically if you need the points elsewhere you can put them elsewhere and it should be fine all right so once you've sorted all this out then we start to come down we get toxic strikes this gets our poison on hit up as well um and then basically enemies poisoned by you cannot deal critical strikes and that means we become almost crit immune as long as we've damaged an enemy then we come down we get thick skin we don't really need the avoidance because we're running purity of elements but this just gives us a good buff to 15 percent to our life pool then we come down now that i got all of these last i didn't get these first so then i came across picked up versatile combatant because we're going to start stacking um block then you want to get deflection i then came down and got testudo um, because this gets our attack block up significantly and we recover life when we block and you also want one percent chance to block attack damage per five percent chance of block on shield which you know we don't get a great amount on this it's what 25 percent, so it's an extra five percent block but that could equate to 10 percent spell block off the impact of versatile combatant um, and this caps your block at 50 50 for both spell and attack block just to reiterate that um then i came up and i got revelry so i could get my mana mastery and 12 percent increased mana reservation efficiency of skills and this is how i have so many auras in this build 
Then I got Dirty Techniques because this gives us increased damage over time and ailment effect. Oh, ailment uh, damage dealt. Then I came up, I got my socket for my Watcher's Eye, Savagery, which gave us another Frenzy Socket. And then I came up to get Cloth and Chain. This increases their evasion and armor and also gives us resistances. And then every, and then I got the Mastery for every four seconds, regenerate life equal to 1% of armor and evasion rating over one second, which is a huge quality of life balance for this build. Then I came down and got Discipline of Slaughter because we're stacking eight Frenzy Charges. This is really useful for the build. Now, finally, we get to the large cluster. So obviously come down and pick up these evasion nodes. I got Wicked Paul and Unspeakable Gifts is really important because that allows you to do Chaos Pops. Um, so basically this is a eight socket or eight point um, large cluster jewel. And then the first one I went for for my mediums is Brood for Potency and Spike Concoction. So you'll need this. This one's a little more expensive. And then Surging Vitality to get my health pool up and my regeneration rate up. Um, and then I went and got Unwavering Evil and Brood for Potency, and then sec <coughs> Second Skin. And Second Skin gives us 3% Spell Block, 3% uh, Attack Block, which will end up being 6% Spell Block, and then 30% Increased Armor, because we want as much armor as we can possibly choke into the build. Ascendancy-wise, while I catch my breath. All right. Um, so basically, uh, we also get Withered from, uh, from Nature's Reprisal as well. So we have a lot of Withered on this build. Um, you want nat nature's adrenaline first, and then basically I got master of toxis, um, and this means that when you kill a poison enemy during any flask effect, then nearby enemies are poisoned um, during this time as well uh, by a chance of 20%, and you deal 100% more damage. So this is how you clear huge amounts of packs, as you would have seen in the B-roll. has no sweat in maps or a delve for this reason. Um, then I got... Uh, nature's reprisal third and then i got nature's boon fourth as i was ascending up and that's basically it for the skill tree like it's not an overtly complicated skill tree but it's a really cool one and potentially like if we could get explosive concoction working if we changed out the poison nodes for something else like crit or something like that then potentially that could work really well as well but yeah that's basically it Okay, so hopefully I went through this in enough detail. I sort of talked through it pretty quickly because there are so many mechanics that go into getting this build to work. Um, anyway, so the POB will be in the description. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Um, don't ask me if it does Ubers. Every, oh, there'll be one person that'll think they're funny and they'll ask me that question. Uh, it can't do Ubers. As far as I know, it can't do Ubers. I haven't tried. Like, you can try. If you build it, try it. Uh, see how you go. If you're an all-rounder, you don't want to die a lot in game or whatever, this build is for you. Very similar to like my Shield Crush or my Detonate Dead. Um, pretty tanky, heavily sustainable and relatively cheap to get working within a pretty fair budget. Would it work well on consoles? Yes, if you can get the items, which shouldn't be too difficult. Um, you should have no sweat. Will you have problems generating Frenzy Charges if you can't get those particular items? There are other ways to get Frenzy Charges. One would be to get uh, Brutal Blade uh, as one option, and that could, you know, apply when you block. Um, but yeah, anyway, you just have to work around it once you get to that point. Um, anyway, uh, don't forget to follow the Twitch. Don't forget to follow the YouTube. Uh, don't forget to drop a like. And until next time, hopefully this build gets you into playing Poisonous Concoction on the Pathfinder, and I'll talk to you guys later.